In this video, I'm going to provide a brief overview as far as working in Blender but also working in GIMP and how you can begin to prepare as far as organizing all of your files to do so. In previous lectures, I've kind of talked a little bit about, you know, for this grouping of class videos here, we've talked about graphic scale, where we were only focused on the one program that produced one file that we could export into published pieces. As you continue in multimedia, be it in video games, be it in video, audio, graphics, etc., it's going to be a rarity that you are strictly working in one piece of software, but also as well that you are able to do everything in that single piece of software that you need to have done. So that's why right now you can see on my screen I have split here. On the left hand side I have GIMP open, but then on the right hand side here I have Blender. Now, Blender is a 3D modeling program that is capable of animation, video work. Uh, you can also work, though, with textures, materials, and creating 3D objects. The one thing that Blender lacks, though, is the capabilities as far as whenever you're working with and creating materials through textures, the ability to edit and design these textures. And that's where, on the other hand, GIMP comes into play. So the big question is, is how do you begin to organize for these sorts of projects? If you have any experience with game engines, such as Unity or Unreal, you'll often notice that not only whenever you make a new project does it make a brand new folder for you, but it also makes a bunch of subsequent folders for you to store your content in as well. You've got to start thinking in that mentality here. So one nice thing is, even though by default, for instance, when you open up Blender, the default up on your tabbed elements here, you may be in the layout. If you go over into the shading tab here, you get a whole new workspace that not only allows you to work with materials along the side menu options here, but you also have the nodes available to you. And you also have a file browser on the left hand side. So this is great that if I want to come in here now, and maybe for instance, if I want to navigate up here as far as finding a location, to install my information here, and maybe I decide I want to put this on my desktop. You can do this one of two ways. You are going to want some sort of folder to hold your project files. So you can do this directly in Blender, or you could do this preemptively before you open both of the packages. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the plus symbol, and I'm going to call this MMC113 3D Projects. So I now have a folder here on my desktop that is going to house all of my working files regarding Blender and GIMP. Blender will be specifically for as far as all of the different 3D files that I have, and its working file extension is .blend blend. Meanwhile, the working file type for GIMP here is .xcf. You want to make sure that you're always holding on to those files because that way then you can go back and edit at any point in time. Yes, at some point you will want to do a published file such as a PNG or a JPEG, but for right now you want to make sure you save those files. So I'm going to go ahead here and just real quickly, I'm going to go ahead and just make some edits here as far as doing a quick fill, add a print, and let's pretend that this is a material that I want to use. So now I can go ahead and GIMP and do a file save. And I'm going to navigate back to the desktop and find that folder here. So I'm going to call this, let's go ahead and call this maybe practice. Well, actually, we'll call it texture. Now. Just to show you here, though, if I double click it in Blender, notice that Blender does not recognize the .xcf file type. This would be a situation where, yes, we want to save this file type, but also we would have to export it. So if I come in and just do an export as, notice it wants to put it in the same location where I saved that working file. And now if I go ahead and export, Do a refresh, now you can actually see the published texture appearing. 
On the flip side, I'd want to do the same thing with Blender, where I'd want to do a file save, and I'd want to navigate to the desktop and find that 113 project. And down here at the bottom, you can see how it says .blend, so maybe I call this workingdemo.blend, and I save my Blender file. So now, whenever I am working, I have all of the assets in one place. Again, this can get a little overwhelming, and if you do take a program like Blender to the next level where you're doing maybe animations or videography work, you're not only going to just be dealing in GIMP files as far as graphics, you're also going to be dealing in audio files, you could be dealing in video clips, and you could be dealing in published graphic files such as posters or magazine spreads, etc. So it's really important when you're starting out to make sure that you organize all of your assets.